Okay. Mic check is Shante Arnett. I've officially clocked in and you have officially tuned in. Thank you so much for coming. This is a POC POV. And I want to give a shout out to every single person watching this video. If you're new to my channel, I appreciate you stopping by and giving me a little bit of your time. If you wouldn't mind, please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell and do all of the things that all of your other favorite YouTubers tell you to do in their videos. If you're returning to my channel, hey girl, welcome back. And thank you so much for coming back and giving me more of your time. I appreciate you. So today's show, we're going a little bit differently because I want to loosen up the tension of the show. I feel like I'm only talking about extremely heavy topics, but that's kind of like the point of the show. So today we're talking about sex. Sex, 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 honey. We, we finna get nasty. We finna talk about all the ways we out here doing it and doing it and doing it well. No, I'm completely kidding. Um, we're not talking about sex, sorry. Um, no, we're not talking about sex, sorry. If you think that we should talk about sex, please drop down in my comments and let me know if you want me to talk about sex and what angle you think I should work that into the POC POV. But today we're actually talking about interracial dating. So I'm going to give my thoughts on interracial dating as a general topic. And I'm going to talk about uh, my personal experience with interracial dating. Or rather my thoughts on interracial dating. Um, um, everything that I'm going to say in this video is like strictly perspective because I'm, you know, married. So to a black man hey babe love you um so yeah let's just get into it because i have a lot of topics that i want to discuss and i'm just gonna jump in and we're gonna talk about me for a second sorry i'm jumping back and forth to my notes right here so um if you see me dotting i'm not like paranoid or anything i'm just looking at my notepad but my personal thoughts on interracial dating okay mind you People do whatever they want to do. I don't have a problem with interracial dating or anybody dating whatever they want to. Like I've said before, I'm an advocate for everybody doing whatever the hell they want to do as long as they don't hurt anyone or themselves. And everybody does whatever they want to do with positive intention and with everybody's best interest in mind. Then your business is not my business. Okay, so I have no issues with interracial dating with that being said i have never dated white specifically i've dated outside my race like um asian or um hawaiian but whatever um and i've never dated white because there's a few things that play into that never happening one, because I've never come across, like, I've never been in the right space at the right time where a white guy that I was attracted to, that was attracted to me, we, like, made the connection. That's never happened to me. Not that I've never been attracted. Um, but I also have suffered from, like, internal guilt as a black person and it's caused me to never want to like cross that line and i'm hesitant to even call it a line does that make sense because i don't have an issue with other people doing it for some reason i have just i don't want to say have an issue it's just i've always been hesitant and even though the opportunity has never presented itself, I've always had that in the back of my mind. Um, it comes from the, you know, historic relationship between black people and white people and that toxic, toxic narrative that we have no choice but to acknowledge and to understand that this is where America is and this is where the relationship stands and this is the history that we are working with. So there's an automatic hesitation 
not just in dating but sometimes in just approach in certain spaces especially living in the south there's always a hesitation of you know a first thought you know you never know who thinks what um so i've always had that like internal hesitation of like i just can i just don't i don't see how as much as pro black as i am i never thought that i would for some reason me being pro black attached an internal guilt that i didn't realize i had until i saw white people that i was attracted to while i was learning and becoming aware and more focused in my pro-blackness if that makes sense so um it's like trying to It's like trying to reconcile my attractions with my wokeness. And that was something that I was like having a very big difficulty with when I was single. And I wanted to like explore that. I could never push myself to. Any other race I have, I was totally fine with. But based on history, I couldn't bring myself to whatever friends total i mean like never had like the initial hesitation there is with anyone but once i meet you and we're cool it's all good i don't have any hesitation with you until you show me something i should be hesitant of and that's just as a person not just as a white person but that's with anybody i'm hesitant with anybody until you show uh, until you show me that you're cool and then once we cool then we cool until we not and then we can fix it and whatever but with that being said um that's always been the biggest thing that i've had in the back of my mind it's always been like how, how could you know mm, whatever now another thing that i want to talk about within interracial dating is fetishism within the community because there is a thing where because of traditional stereotypes about black men and you know things like that we will become and it's hard saying we because i identify as non-binary but as a person who was born male we become eye candy in a way that in a way that we are only looked at as sexual objects rather than people with personalities and so that is something that actually also attaches itself to tokenism because when you're not around a lot of us when one of us pops into a room it's like oh look 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 oh oh wait oh wait oh wait 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 wait, wait. you know what i mean and i'm gonna do another video on tokenism i was just thinking about that because i uh write down topics of things i want to do episodes on and i try to like flesh them out a little bit and i did one on tokenism last night so i'm gonna do an episode on tokenism soon but yeah that lends itself to tokenism and i just made that connection in my mind because if you're around something all the time i don't drop down in the comments and let me know if you're around something all, all the time like if that's something that you're used to can you still have a fetish for it 
But I guess that kind of doesn't make sense because if you have a foot fetish, you're around feet all the time. I, I don't know. Like, I wonder, in this perspective, if you have a fetish for black men, but you're around black men all the time, like just as friends and things like that, if you're used to being around black men, is that internal fetishism or is that like a debunking of your fetishism? Drop down in the comments and let me know. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of times where we become tokens of sexual, I like we become sexual objects rather than people with personalities that you want to get to know. We just become the thing you want to fuck. And then once you have that, you, you know, move along. I'm not saying that every case where a white person fucks a black person that it's fetishism or that they're only doing it because you're black. I'm sure there's genuine attraction. Like I said, interracial dating is everywhere. I see it everywhere and, you know, whatever. But I, as someone who has experienced that type of thing happening I'm just only addressing what I know to be a fact and not making a general statement if that makes sense so I don't want to say that white attraction to black attra white attraction to black people is based in fetishism that's not what I'm trying to say I'm saying that I have experienced and seen and heard of people's experiences where they were subjected to attraction purely based on sexual activity to a point where they didn't know the person's name, didn't ask the person's name, didn't care about the person's name. Queer people, look on your hookup apps. Ask perfect example if you're watching this video and you want an example of what i'm talking about ask a gay person on a hookup app you'll find out what i'm talking about go down a reddit thread sometime you'll 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 figure out what i'm talking about so i want to clarify that before i move on i'm not making a blank a, a blanket statement saying that caucasian attraction to black people is strictly or purely based in fetishism that's not what i'm saying but what i'm saying is in those type of cases that sets a tone for that's that that sets a tone and it sets an awareness and it becomes like okay now um, I also want to talk about legendary, like, myths, and not necessarily myths, but judgments that are made against black men who prefer to date white women and black women who date white men. Or whatever gender, but, um... Some of these, some of these examples that I'm giving are in those specific gender contexts. So I don't want to put uh, men in those boxes and, but whatever, um, for whatever gender. But the examples that, but like some of the examples that I'm, I'm giving are in specific gender contexts. Like, allegedly, they say that white women are more submissive and more docile, which pisses me off because I know plenty of white women, and I know a few that are, you know, calm and cool and aren't, you know, you know, they're out there, and we know that stereotype. But I know plenty of white women, and more often than not, especially in today's society, 
white women ain't having it no more than a sister. Ooh, I said sister. That's now real 90s. Go off. But the reason why it pisses me off is because it subscribes to the theory of the angry black woman. And it pisses me off because you're trying to say that because a white woman is allegedly submissive and allegedly docile, that a black woman is angry because she ho she holds you accountable she holds you accountable or holds you to an equal standard to her like i'm like what is it like why i need y'all drop down in my comments I'm sorry i'm forgetting i'm putting this on youtube and i'm thinking i'm just venting to my phone and I'm forgetting I'm putting this on YouTube and this is actually a conversation that I can have with you guys. Drop down in my comments and tell me why do black men think white women are more submissive and dust out? What is that? What are specific traits that play into that stereotype? Because let Dr. Heavenly tell it, or Mary de Medicine, Y'all ain't got no excuse. You know what I mean? And looking at the black women in my life that I know and the black women that I've seen growing up, you know, the only hostile or angry thing that I can see is that we hold you more accountable. And this is where the non-binary part plays in because... <clears throat> I don't understand how black women are angry for holding black men accountable and expecting greatness. This might play into the fetishism narrative of white women because it's been told that white women view the black men the black man in this mending this mandingo type of stereotype and that he's this big strong big dick man and that he's going you know take control and fuck the shit out of you and all of this other type of shit but so they play into that damsel in distress white woman type of thing these are all stereotypes that I'm speaking of. Um, but a black woman is strong in her stance. She is powerful with her word and she expects greatness and equality. From my experience and my own personal perspective. So I don't so once again drop down in the comments and help me piece that together because my experiences are different than the stereotypes that i am well aware of but i don't have examples to specifically play into that narrative other than like media and television and like things that are presented in a package for me to understand so i want like real life examples of these things so if you could drop down in the comments give me your stories drop down in my inbox y'all know where my social media is shantae arnett but i'm gonna keep going because i want to flip to black women who have a preference to white men and the stereotypes that come around that um you know i hear this phrase a lot of times and they say that once you go white your credit get right and Y'all know all those stereotypes, but, you know, with all the Black Wall Street um, Instagram pages, all the Black wealth, all of the buy Black business, we got to start subscribing to ourselves, and we can't keep subscribing to negative stereotypes that play into old narratives. Like, we got to come around to some point where we have to start pushing past the old narratives and building our people up to a point to where we don't have to even we, we don't even have to present those narratives in the first place do you get what i mean 
I feel like we have to get to a position where those stereotypes shouldn't play a factor in the positions that we play because we all have to get to the better place and we all have to think of the greater good and we all have to grow past that. So... Sorry, that pushed me into a we gotta come together tangent. But also, there's this thing of light skinned kids and good hair and these stereotypes are very real and I want to understand how I want to understand how those things can be so far at the forefront of a desire when you're considering having children that you're willing to place race at the forefront of your decision making when it comes to who you're having a child with. Does that make sense? Like, drop down in the comments and make me understand because I want to grab a sense of how light skin and good hair are so important when it comes to the makeup of your child that race becomes a prevalent factor in your decision making on who you decide to breed with like to me it's not a problem i don't see it as a problem but the thought process that that is so far in the forefront of what you want to that that's so far in the forefront of your thinking that that's what you're thinking about when you're thinking this is who you want to have a child with and this and the third. Make me understand because while I consider myself a blend of masculine and feminine energies, I don't have a womb, I don't have a uterus, and I have never been an actual woman. I am a, I am an, I am a male assigned at birth and I've only been raised a black male. And I've only gained the language to understand my non-binary non identity in the recent years. So I'm piecing all of that together and I'm trying to understand all of these old narratives and break down these old stereotypes so that as I continue into my life, I can continue with, a clean, with as clean a slate as possible with everybody that I come in contact with so that I don't go into future relationships with old stereotypes and old thinking. So I'm trying to break down all of these stereotypes in these videos and I'm not coming to present these videos as if I'm pushing them on you or as if I'm pushing these type of narratives on you as if these are my beliefs. I'm trying to understand where they come from and I want people to give real world examples because I see all of the narratives that um the media tells me or that is presented for me to understand but i want to like talk to the people and i want to talk one-on-one -on -one with people who understand what i'm saying so if you are in an interracial relationship if you've experienced interracial dating if you have gained an awakening by me acknowledging some of these stereotypes that come with interracial dating that I've grown up knowing about and that I've been presented with in my life such as fetishism within the community if you have an internal guilt about your attraction to a person of color as a white person or at, or to a white person as a person of color if you have a story about that let me know if you think that white women or white people are more submissive and docile and that's why you want to date them make me understand that in the comments if you don't want to date black women because you think we're angry or you think they're angry make me understand that in the comments i want to understand all of it because i want to try to dismantle as many of these preconceived notions about our people and about the people around us as possible so that we can start to wipe the slate clean because at the end of the day we're going to have to live here together and we're going to have to unify at some point but as a community i feel that we should come together and have the conversation so that we can unify as a community so that we can so that we can unite as a society if that makes sense so i'm hoping that 
I've articulated some of the things that, ooh, you know what? I'm not even gonna go deep into this comment, but I am gonna acknowledge it because I do want, because I see it at the bottom of my notes. And before I get out of here, I wanna make it. A preference that black women have to white men is that I've heard that, I've heard black women say that white men treat them better. And when I hear that, I immediately get struck with a sense of anger and irony. If that makes sense. That is like a preconceived defense that comes with the history of the white man and the black woman and the slave narrative of the white master raping the black woman and these illegitimate mixed children then being disregarded to the world because black men don't want to take in this mixed baby that has white DNA in it. And I just, uh, I'm sorry, all these old ass stories, that, that note just, sorry, it just hit me. And the irony of that, I want to dismantle because I've only seen things like this addressed in like situational comedies and not really in a serious way. So I want to have a serious conversation about it. So if you're a black woman or a black person and you feel like white people treat you better, make me understand that in the comments. And it's not a judgment or a saying that I agree or that I disagree. It's just that these are all things that I hear and these are all things that I know of or that I've seen. And so with all of these examples, I wanna just kind of put them out there as it relates to the topic of interracial dating. And I wanna share some of my experience with my internal guilt, with my attraction. So I wanna just understand. So y'all hit me down, y'all hit me up in the comments, y'all get in my inbox, y'all like share subscribe follow uh hit the notification bell questions and suggestions are always welcome make sure you catch up on episodes one through four of a plc pov make sure you catch up on all the episodes of in my queer view <coughs> excuse me make sure you catch up on all the episodes of in my queer view make sure you catch up on my ep make sure you catch up on my episode of Essays with essay. Sorry, yeah, I have a stutter, so I'm not gonna edit these. I'm just gonna like hit it and rip it. So if you catch me stuttering in the video, I have a speech impediment. It's a lot better than it was when I was a kid. So just be glad you're getting these one or two in a 30 minute video. Um, catch up on my episode of Essays with Essay that I did on Thanksgiving. And if you have any random topics that you want me to talk about, because In My Queer View got cut off yesterday, and I'm sorry about that, but I just uploaded it because I've had a lot. Whew, that episode was really late, and I'm really sorry. But if you have any random things that you want me to talk about that are outside of just speaking about the um, Black experience or the, or, the, or the queer experience specifically, Hit me up about that, and if you just have something random that you want me to talk about, just whatever, that you want my opinion on, questions and suggestions are always welcome. So, I'm gonna go ahead and go on break because I'm about out of drink, and I need me some more juice. This is Cranberry Sierra Mist. This is really good. It's not healthy at all. It looks like it's healthy because it's in this cute bottle that my husband gave me, but it's soda. It's ridiculous. I should really be more healthy. I brush my teeth and then I drink soda. Anyway. Um, y'all hit me up in the comments. Y'all hit me up and let me know what you think about all of the things that I've mentioned here on this episode. If you have anything that you want me to speak about as a PLC, hit me up and let me know about that. If you have anything that you want me to talk about as a queer person, hit me up and talk about that. If you have any random things that you want me to talk about, I now have a show where I can talk about that. So hit me up and let, let, let me know what you guys think about this episode and let me know what else you wanted to see me talk about. All right, I'm getting ready to go on break. Peace. 
Hey y'all, I had to come off a break and talk back to y'all one more time after I wrapped up this video. Um, if my camera is shaking, sorry. I just, I felt like I had to talk about this before I posted this video because um, I thought about it after I wrapped. I was thinking about the focus of this video was to talk about interracial dating just from a personal perspective but i forgot that because i was thinking about a lot of my personal feelings on interracial dating dated back to historical moments and historical times where you know the interaction between the races wasn't conducive not that it's much more conducive today but we're doing better I'm trying anyway i'm i'm trying But I wanted to touch on the interracial experience from another perspective because I thought about it as I was about to upload the video. I thought about interracial marriage didn't become legal until 1967. So people have been fighting for the unification of the races for a while. And I want to, it's crazy that my focus in this video was mainly directed at the separation of the races in history and why I had apprehension about interracial dating in my past. And I completely didn't look at the angle of people fighting in this country to be able to just get married to who they wanted to you know and that connects home with me because once again as a queer person as someone who falls into so many different boxes as a black person as a queer person as somebody who is identifying with the trans experience it's it's easy for me to empathize and relate with different perspectives on historical narratives because I can relate the understanding of that to my own experience and I want to know how you guys feel about that like is it not like super crazy weird that interracial marriage didn't become legal until 1967 that to me that seems like for me someone who was born in 1991 that seems like it was like just a few years like like just a just just 20 years ago it's been so much longer than that now but it's crazy how people have been fighting to unite the races for so long and as someone who is using this series and this platform to do that i wanted to take a minute to acknowledge that and talk about how more of us have to join the fight and talk about how we want to unite the races instead of the ways that we've been kept apart. And so as much as I talk about the negative and the experience of why we come off in this country the way that we come off, I do want to talk about the positive side of our interactions as well and talk about the good things that... have come from our interaction if that makes sense so i just wanted to take a moment to talk about interracial marriage in our country and the fact that i forgot that it became legal like it was the one the fact that it was illegal but i mean you know you know the times so yeah i want you guys to think about that and tell me what you think about that. Once again, questions and suggestions are welcomed and encouraged. Please drop down in my comments. Please hit me in my inboxes. Please like, share, subscribe, follow, hit that notification bell. Once again, do everything that all your favorite YouTubers tell you to do on their channels. All right. Um, PLC, POV, in my queer view, essays with essay. Hit me up. Let me know what you want me to talk about. Peace.